Yo, what's up, Sell Anywhere listeners? Uh, thank you for tuning in and thank you for believing that your talent is not limited to your zip code. Um, brought someone on pretty special today. He caught my attention because I, I, I believe that um, somewhere in an alternate universe, he is, he, is a, um, he is another version of me, or maybe he's the me that I want to be. Uh, I, I, uh, I was tuning in one day on, uh, on LinkedIn, and I saw someone in an industry that I used to be in. It was copiers, and this guy literally was, was wielding, I don't know if it was a samurai sword, but he was wielding a sword, and the dude was slaying copier problems. And I laughed and laughed and laughed because I'm like, that's always what I wanted to do and, uh, as, a, as a copier salesperson, but uh, I've been following him. I love what he does. Uh, just with personal brand and authenticity, and he is absolutely out there crushing it, selling copiers in one of the most competitive markets that there is out there, uh, Orlando, Florida. So uh, welcome to the show, Dale Dupree, the copier warrior. Dale, welcome to the show, man. Share something about yourself, man. Who, who, is, this, who is this masked man? <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know about masked man. Like honestly, like my persona, like the the brand itself is is so telling of who I am. Like when people see it, there and they wonder, is this guy really weird and just out of his mind? Like the answer is yes. yes. I am all those things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my my name is Dale Dupree. For those who don't know me, and my friends do call me the Copier Warrior. I live in Orlando, Florida. Born and raised here, which is pretty weird. It's funny actually when I. When I meet people for the first time and, and we have that conversation when we're building that bonding and rapport and, and, and I ask them, where are you from? And it's never Orlando. And I respond back that I'm a, I'm a native. They stare at me <laughs> for a good solid, you know, 10 seconds of silence like you're, you're from here. <laughs> so I'm sure that you can kind of relate to some degree and that, you know, I know that you've been in the, the Florida area that we're just littered with tourists and people that got sick of the snow and moved down here basically. But Oh, oh yeah. And I always get, but usually for me, of course, the next question that I get asked, I'm sure you get it. Well, I'm sure that you go lots to <laughs> fill in a blank. What is it? Disney World, yes. Universal Studios, Come on. Sea World. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, the answer is no, but also the, the what's funny is, is that there's no human being, at least I, I personally believe this, there's no human being that lives in Orlando that at least doesn't have like a distant relative or friend of a friend that works at one of those theme parks and can get you in for free. So <laughs> oh, see, no, I, don't that, I, I don't think I've ever paid to go into a theme park, dude. Uh, you're, you're a closer connection. So now, now I know the real reason why I connected with you. This is really good. <laughs> So, so tell me, what can you do for a family of 10? Come on, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hook that up offline. I don't want people to get <laughs> so, so, Dale, tell us, tell us a little about, well, this is a Sell Anywhere podcast, right? Um, you're, you're a little bit different than probably the, the typical listener. But um, first off, tell me your sitch right now, what, where you're at right now. And tell me about your, a little bit of your fluid location type stuff, because you're more of a local type person. But, um, you yeah, know, share with us, like, your location type stuff. Yeah, sure. So I'm again, I'm here in Orlando, Florida. I'm the sales manager for Zeno Office Solutions. And I, I cover kind of a, a wide range. We call it Central Florida to make it easier for people to just like comprehend it. But what they don't realize is that reaches all the way up to like Daytona Beach, all the way over to Palm Bay, which are both on the coast, um, and then all the way into Lake County, which is kind of um, a, a forgotten land <laughs> in the state of Florida where cows and horses still roam. <laughs> this is true. Um, yeah. So, so I have a, a, a vast territory, you know, all the way down to Kissimmee, um, you know, all the way up to, like I said, that Volusia County, County territory. And the thing is, uh, about copy yourselves and what we do specifically is that you can't walk in and say, I'm with the big national firm. 99% of the time, people are looking for that local touch in a copier realm. Now, we do have some, some big headquartered um, companies and firms as well that are here that they like the backing of knowing that Xeno Office Solutions, where I work, is also affiliated with Global Imaging. And so we're, we're big, right? We're, we're tied directly to Xerox. Um, but our marketplace right here in Central Florida runs on its own. You know, we, we decide you know, who the sales department is we decide what the leadership looks like. We decide what it is we're dropping off to individual prospects. We decide how it is that we're making our prospecting calls in general. 
Um, and so when you have a little bit more control in your marketplace and you have the backing of such a large organization, you, you, you get a couple different things that make you dangerous inside of the territories. As long as you're honed into that and you understand the power that you're wielding. <laughs> but you know, so for us, it's <laughs> for, yeah, it, because sales is, sales is a very powerful weapon. It's a very powerful tool. It's like music. I tell people all the time, you have, you have the opportunity to truly serve somebody um, or you have the opportunity to take advantage of somebody. And that's a reality that a lot of salespeople don't like to talk about. Some, some do, you know, at the bar with their buddies when they cash that $30,000 paycheck that they didn't deserve. Um, and, and, and they know they didn't, <laughs> but because they were able to manipulate the buyer and, you know, lower their price to dirt and, you know, they don't know any better the buyer themselves, you know, until about a year, two years into that contract that they got screwed in the first place. You know, when you've got that kind of power, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be incredibly cognizant of what it is that you can accomplish and what it is that you should accomplish. So, and, yeah, absolutely. And a little disclaimer. Uh, for those who are listening, you are absolutely going to hear things that will give you superpowers. But our pact with you is that you must use those powers only for good. <laughs> only exactly. for good. So um, but I, I guess where I was going with that, though, Dale, was I guess your day-to-day -day office. So um, I know that you actually are in, um, I guess, you know, traditional corporate office, but you're also probably set up in your car quite a bit, especially if you're covering such a large territory. Um, so, so where does the copier warrior work from? Yeah, it's definitely in this car. I, I get to the office typically in between five and six a.m. and I, I start there. I get, I do my prep there. I do some of my personal time there, and I'm typically on the road um, by seven thirty to eight thirty, somewhere in between those numbers. And I'm visiting all the territories where my reps are stationed, and it can be up to four hundred and fifty miles a day that I'll put on my car between all my territories. So it's a lot of driving. It's fun though. I enjoy that part of it, but sometimes in a day I'll only see maybe four, maybe five total prospects <laughs> because I'm jumping from territory to territory, from rep to rep. Um, but yeah, I spend a lot of time in the field. I spend a lot of time in my car. I just actually cleaned my car too, so it looks great right now. Too bad I can't show you, but um, well, just describe it, man. Like, what's what's in that mobile office of yours? What do you what what do you have to have that makes this thing run? Honestly, like the only thing that I truly need are my interrupt marketing pieces as I like to call them. They're my first touch pieces. So I have my crumpled letter in the back. I have some of my business cards that are a total pattern interrupt for people that are viewing them. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of those on my LinkedIn content that I've, I've commented or put as pictures inside of my content. But the idea for me is that the only weapons I truly need are something to, to, to gather curiosity from my prospects. Um, I like to call it undeniable curiosity because I'm so extreme, <laughs> but so for me, it's not just, oh, this is cute or, oh, this makes sense. It's, it's this awakening that the prospect has. So, so when it comes to my tools, that's, that's pretty much it, dude. I don't, I don't go around with a site seller with a bunch of brochures and spec sheets on my copiers. Um, that's boring anyway. Um, and, and realistically, people aren't looking for speeds and feeds. They're not looking for features, advantages, and benefits. They're just looking for a better relationship with their salesperson. <laughs> I find that constantly out in the field. So, so to answer your question fully, I have two boxes in the back of my car that are full of my marketing. Um, I have a front seat that's always full of empty wrapper wrappers of like granola bars and whatnot because I I'm on the road and I hate fast food. So, um, other than that, I mean, it's a pretty normal car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no smoke screen, no bulletproof, you know, the, okay. Not yet. So, all right, all right. So, um, Dale, bring us to the, um, to the origin of the copier warrior because um, I, it feels like to step into that is something that probably took a little bit of courage. Um, mm. and, and, and also, uh, it, like, it's a momentum, I'm sure, that's been easier as, you, as you've gone along, but you probably still get some cross looks. But tell, tell us about the origin of in the birth of, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the binding of Dale Dupree equaling copier warrior. How did that happen? Yeah, I, I love this quote by Karen Kaiser Clark, and I think it describes that origin best. It says, life is change, growth is optional, choose wisely. <laughs> and I remember when I Ooh. first had the opportunity to start changing the game in my marketplace, and that was when I had this full-on realization that there was something different in the sales cycle that happened when I would be myself, <laughs> when, when I would 
have a conversation from one human to another, not worry about the product itself, not worry about the money that I was going to make or the money that the customer was going to spend. I started looking at, at the budget phase as an investment, right? I started looking at what people would call, you know, the pain of the pleasure phase where they're trying to figure out, you know, am I going to, am I going to enhance this person's life or am I going to fix a problem? Um, I found that instead of using tactics or doing anything along those lines, it's just having a normal conversation. Like, so what's going on here? <laughs> you know, why am I so figure today? Right. Just what, when you, when you kind of flip the script per se, it, it, it feels more natural. It is more fun. And, and that's how the copier word was born where I said, you know what? People, people don't know that I, that they can have this experience with me. Um, even if I walk in the door and told them point blank, Hey, we can have this really cool, really chill sales experience. I mean, they're just going to look at you like you're nuts. And uh, I mean, they hate salespeople. Most, most people that are, that I'm targeting hate us. <laughs> doctor's offices whatnot so, so I decided to come up with the concept of branding myself and and so when I when I come and I do a first touch with your office typically I I don't talk to anyone I don't see anyone other than the front desk person that I I, I joke around with I had a marketing piece too they get they get a visual of it they laugh with me we we have a warm heart-to-heart -heart conversation that really doesn't have anything to do with the products or services because they're spelled out right in front of them on these these marketing pieces like the first one that I developed was a picture of a baby on top of a copier and in the middle of the copier was an espresso machine and the bottom was an oven with a turkey in it and there was pancakes <laughs> over on the right hand side the finisher was holding like a coat rack on it and, and it simply stated that I can make your life easier <laughs> right like this almost the dumbest call to action you could possibly think of but, but People looked at the imagery, they laughed, they saw the call to action, they thought it was funny, and then they would apply that to the things going on in the, in the office with the copier. And they would say, you know, I don't feel this way about my copy machine. Um, and then I started to branch out and brand myself more, so I would add myself into the imagery, um, which was a lot of fun. So I did these crazy photo shoots and pump out these marketing pieces that copier people in my area saw and didn't believe them. They thought, this is a joke, there's no way this guy's successfully doing anything um, but quite the opposite I mean I was the number one rep in my territories for years um, between all my competitors and me and I, I mostly say that because I was the one winning all the big RFPs that all 10 of us were on you know I mean <laughs> yeah uh, but but why why did you go the route of the copier warrior why not the copier like there's so many things you could have done like where does this persona meld to you yeah the warrior side of it is, is fun I like to talk about the fact that I, I will sort people see me with that sword all the time, right? But um, they asked me, you know, what does that, what does that translate? You know, because to, to some it's violence, right? <laughs> but but my mission statement is is full, chock full of the reasons why I chose that, and it's it's pretty simple. It's it's really that I will that sword to fight against things like poor service, bad sales experiences, or at times, you know, possessed copiers. Uh, but most importantly, I I will it to protect integrity and values as the root of my relationships with my clients or my prospects. So a warrior persona to me is, is bigger than just a guy that's out fighting a war. It's, it's a guy that's protecting those that he wants to serve. Um, so I, I went with the warrior because it's a little more epic, but it can be deep as well too. I can translate to people that I, I want to be something that's, that's bigger in your life, not just your copier rep. So, so and the warrior, again, like it, it came naturally in the, in the marketing side as well, because you can have a lot of fun with that, with the imagery that you choose and you know, with all the pop culture that, that surrounds that word in general, there was, there was just a lot of options for me. So it made sense from my core principal side and it made sense from a marketing side as far as imagery for branding. So I ran with it. <laughs> Dude, I, I love, like, this is so cool. I, you, you've been mentioning a word over and over and over again. And really it feels like this is like a part of your DNA. Tell us about fun. Like, like how did you, uh, and again, like there's not, it's not just fun, but it's a decision to have fun. It's a decision to incorporate fun. And, and um, also the decision, oh my gosh, to actually be an authentic, real human that just has authentic, real human conversations. But, but why, like fun, like what is that to you? How, like, and how did you embrace that and run away from this stodgy, stodgy starchy persona that most of us think that salespeople have to have? All right. So I, I think it's important for people to understand that I 
come from the music world. So when I was 17 years old, I was graduating high school. I got signed to a, a record label and I hit the road with my band and Ooh. I didn't go to college. I went straight out into the, into the real world, uh, played a show every night, you know, sometimes 60 days in a row. Um, lots of time and, in, and, in, out in the field, as I like to say, because I'm a salesperson, but <laughs> all, over the, all over the United States, you know, building relationships, creating rapport from thin air with people, um, having fun. So for me, it was it was a creative um, industry as well, too. So it, it tapped into that side of me extremely that I already had kind of just waiting to come out. And when I got... When I got into copiers, and, and again, another thing that people need to understand is that my father founded his copier firm in 1984, and then I was born in 85. So I've literally grown up in the industry. So when I would come home from tour, my dad would always challenge me to, to come and sharpen my sales skills. Hey, just come out. You, you're going to be home for three weeks. Why don't you come out and sell? I'll put you on commission only. You got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> so my dad and I had a great relationship, too. We, he was always challenging me to be better. And also, he was always super supportive of anything that it was that I was doing. So, so when it came to fun, it was, you know, I looked at my dad was calling me to come and 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 sell copiers. Where on the other side of what I was doing, I was constantly out having way too much fun in most cases, <laughs> as a quote unquote rock star. So, one day I'll, I'll never forget this. I I got home. I you know we had broken the band up. We had some things that that, that happened, um, personal things with some of the members that. And basically, we just couldn't hold it together anymore. It's about 2010, 2009. And I remember my dad um, kind of going over territories with some of the reps. And, and it was my favorite thing that I ever saw. It's actually something that I teach people too. But he does all this math on this board, right? He's like, he's talking about how many accounts are in the territory. And if you make this many calls, you're going to touch this many people. And this is what the average copier sell is. And it's just this, this giant board that you know, would confuse anybody walking in for the first time. Like, what are all these numbers? But he'd go through this whole thing and he'd say, does everybody understand, you know, how we got to, to, to the end here? And, and everybody would, of course, you know, yeah, yeah, that was great. And then he erased the whole thing and he'd go, all right, I want you to forget everything I just told you. I want you to go out and I want you to have fun. <laughs> and, and it was like dropping the mic. Like <laughs> where my dad was, he was unique in, in a sense of, how, who he was as a leader and as a sales individual where he didn't believe that, you know, all the people barking statistics and telling you that if you do it this way, you're going to be successful because he had created his own success on his own terms, how he wanted to. Mm. And, and that was, that was something that was powerful for me. And, and it just made me want to have fun <laughs> between the two. <laughs> wow. So what a model you had in your father and I, and I know he was, um, um, you know, really important figure in, um, in your life, but gosh, to, to, uh, literally watch the play by play drawn up and someone to erase that and say, okay, now go have fun. Like that's the, that's the, that's the key, but really just like creating your own success. And, and, and I've seen one of the things I've seen from you, Dale, is that I've seen you kind of buck really some of the trends or what people would say one way or the other. And, um, and just find your own way. Um, you're not always one given to convention. Tell, tell me a little bit about, um, uh, you know, let, let's just say forms and formats and, and various ways that, that uh, you know, the, 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 the triple down close, like, I don't know, whatever these <laughs> could, 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 um, could come up with. And tell me how authenticity has, um, has reigned for you and, and, and helped you. Because it's like, at the end of the day, people just want to have an authentic human conversation with someone who cares, right? Absolutely. I'm in agreement. So it's a great question because just recently I was sharing a little quote unquote tactic as people like to call it. But for me, it, you know, these are far from tactics. They never have been, they never will be. And that's, that's the first problem with the sales world is that the sales world can't comprehend when someone comes out with a new idea that it's just that, that it's not a tactic. It's not some kind of um, smoke and mirrors move to, to, you know, trick the buyer into signing contracts. But I was talking about price pages and I was talking about how you just leave the price blank because you need to have a conversation about price based on investment and based on value. And if we just put a, a, a price on a piece of paper, it's to, to the customer, it's going to be just that. 
Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. It's gonna it's gonna be something very stale and stupid, and it's gonna it's gonna be dumbed down. It's gonna be oh well, we can't afford this, or <laughs> you know oh this is a hundred dollars less than we thought it was gonna be. You know that's a gamble in the first place. So mm. why put your why put your price page out there from that perspective when we we all know that that's how buyers buy. You know they'll they'll sit you down and they'll say well the top three things for us are the relationship, the service, and then of course the price. But if you were to respond back to the customer and say, so if I build a good relationship and I add value and my price is too high, are you going to go with me? And nobody does that in the first place, but when you do, you either get lied to point blank or they don't full on answer that question. <laughs> you know, they'll say, well, <laughs> we, we're, we're definitely going to consider you. If the price is higher and you can fulfill those other two things. <laughs> I, I literally been in that same place um, as a copier uh, salesperson. So yeah, keep going. Yeah. So the, the idea in that for me is, is what, you know, why are we continuing to do these traditional things that buyers are, are accustomed to number one? Yes. Um, and, and secondly, that, that salespeople continue to shoot themselves in the foot over. So I, I make this post, I talk about a blank price page and I've got a whole bunch of people sending me messages, commenting on the post even, challenging that and saying, this is, this is smoke and mirrors more than anything when they don't even understand the way that it works, right? Like, and, and, I'm, and I'm gonna tell you right here on this podcast that when I sit down with somebody, we go through the entire proposal and they try to flip to the back faster than you can even think or blink. <laughs> Every salesperson listening knows that that is true to some instance inside of their walk in the sales world. And it's gotta be the majority of your buyers. You know, so oh, these are all nice pages, and then they just kind of glimpse at the back. Well, the, the price is blank when they get there. And so now they have to follow me back to the front of the page. <laughs> and they have to follow me all the way to the, to the back in, in the progression that I want it to go. And not because I'm being selfish or because I'm trying to control the situation, but because I want to, them to experience my difference. Absolutely. And the way to do that is, is to keep some control on this thing. So when you get to the price though, you pass them the ball, dude. You, I, you know, when you pass somebody the ball, it's under your control. It was your choice to pass that ball, right? So when we get to price, you basically say to them, hey, the price is the price. It's just blank because I want you to tell me whether or not the value that we've just built and the rapport that we have going, the credibility that I've, I've earned with you, if it's enough, to be a hundred bucks more, you know, or 200 bucks more. Cause I don't know what I'm going to be, uh, but I do know I'm 2,500 bucks a month. <laughs> you know, so it's not like you're hiding the price. You're going to tell them verbally out loud. You know, you didn't give them permission to write it down by any means, but you're just trying to have a conversation about it. So it's amazing to me though, to watch the traditional salespeople or the guys that think that somehow that's smoke and mirrors to, to, respond because their <laughs> their outlook on it and the way that they would do it differently is not different at all man it's the same old crap that gets salespeople nowhere in the rapport cycle or in the, in the credibility cycle with their buyer and and so one day that buyer is going to be gone from that company as well and and you've done nothing but sell them a cheap copier so the next buyer that comes in is just going to shock you again because there's you know hey what do you guys think of the vendor but they were the cheapest. <laughs> so we went with them. You know, that, that's, that's how it looks, right? So you're, you've got to build these long-term things. You've got to be surrounding the entire company, not just the buyer. You've got to be pushing the envelope. You've got to be bucking the system because the system sucks. People that are in Ooh. sales today, every single one of you listening that's in sales today, your system sucks. And it's not your system. That's why it sucks. It's somebody else's. Somebody else has taught you these things, has told you this will work. And yeah, it does because everybody does it. <laughs> and it's been done since the 1970s. Mm. But really the quality of life that you want. So, you know, when the copier warrior was born and these, these things that I've put in place were created, they were done in real time and over time with my prospects in mind and also with their feedback. Hey, what did you think of this? Even if I lost the deal, what did you think of this when, when I sent you this or, or we had this conversation? Was that too much? <laughs> you know, is that why I lost the deal? So, you know, for me, it was just this ongoing relationship building tactic. It was nothing, it had nothing to do with what it was that I was trying to accomplish as far as my financial goals or, or my success as a salesperson. It was just, 
I want to know my community better. I want to be able to walk down the street to get a sandwich and know everybody's standing in that room because they all live here, they all work here, and, and we're all part of each other's culture. That was Ooh. my main goal. And anything that I do inside of bucking the sales system. But to go back to your original question uh, or your original statement, I 100% believe that salespeople need to start separating themselves from the crowded bullpen and the scene mm. and distinguishability and be themselves. Dale, this, we are now at the crux of the exact reason that I had you on. I think the value, the, and I hope the listeners are really tuned into this because if, if, if we, the, the value you're bringing right now is, this is weighty. This is weighty. If, if we go around being like everyone else, you're, you're not, you're not going to stand out. You're in a sea of sameness. Uh, you know, the reality is, is that our value comes from our uniqueness and, and being willing to step out and stand out and be different from the crowd. Really, if you want to find a way to be powerful, be different. Do like literally the opposite of what everyone around you is doing. And, and Dale, that's what, I see you, that's what I see you doing in the copier warrior. There's no one else that's saying, well, I'm going to be the copier rock star since Dale didn't take that. There's no <laughs> one that's like, nobody's doing that. They can't. This is something that only works for you. Like this, this, is, this is your personal brand, but you're willing, you willing to pick up the mantle, so to speak, when others would have said, no, I think I'll just be conservative, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? I'm gonna, and, and, and I mean, think about like even, even when a, um, like you watch a lion hunt in the, uh, in, you know, in, the, in the wilderness, it's not going to catch anything you know, in the places where it, it's just, um, you know, it, it, it has to blend in with the thing that it's hunting in the, in the environment that it's hunting. Right. And, 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 and for you, you're, you're literally crossing away and you're saying, listen, like this is what other salespeople are. This ain't me. I'm, I'm right. And, and so you cross that line. Um, I just, I just find there's such value. And, and I guess for you, and I know that you do speaking and you, and you work with groups in different places, Dale, like if you could, if you were to help someone, I know you're big on the why, but also like address some of the how, like how can someone find that personal thing that can make them different that it can also be, I feel like that's what makes them magical, right? When they do certain things, like how, how, what can they do? How can they do that? Um, practically speaking, man, they may be selling medical devices. They might be selling, who knows, who knows what they're selling out there? How can right. Yeah, we, we've got, we've got a fun curriculum that we created, uh, me and, and, and my partner, Jeff, who, you hear on my podcast, Selling Local, if you ever tune into that. Yes. And we created, a, we, we basically took my first touch and said, why is it so different? <laughs> like, how does it work so well for me? And, and how can we help other people comprehend it? And so just real briefly, I'll say that for me, I have some crazy marketing pieces and interrupt pieces. And, and one of them is a brick that comes with instructions on how to throw this brick. It's, it's just a, a sponge brick, by the way, but how to throw this brick at your copy machine when it's jamming and, and taking you off and, and the service guy's not showing up and <laughs> no one, and then no one in the sales department will take your call because they know that they can't do anything anyway. And you've already cut them your check. So whatever. And it's a fun piece, right? And people, people are either, they laugh, they're like, okay, okay, come in and see me. Right. But I tell people, I said, the brick is bigger for me. Right. I tell when I when I talk to the prospect, I don't just say, hey, did you get my joke? <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you laugh at my brick? You know, I, because I, I think on a deeper level. So when I talk to a, a, a prospect, I, I, I tell them what the brick represents for me and what the brick represents for me is a, is a nostalgic memory and in, in, in my foundation, which is that my dad had a brick fireplace at our house. In, in Orlando growing up and, and by the way no one in Florida yeah in I was gonna say why in Florida has a, a fireplace <laughs> so and we just happen to have a brick one that is a beautiful fireplace but you know we've maybe used it six times over the course of my life but <laughs> so right the, the idea though is that I tell people I say the brick that I left for you came out of that 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 fireplace and it, it's it's more to me than just something you're gonna throw at your copier it's it's the house that I grew up in in Orlando, Florida, and um, it represents the foundation of my business relationship with you and the future of what it looks like. And and people hear me say that and go, okay, now I'm gonna have to have this guy in. <laughs> like even if I was already thinking about it in the first place, I'm gonna have to. But who has that story? You know, 
Uh, I tell people this all the time, like not everybody can take the brick and can turn it into something so deep like I have and so fun like I have. So maybe for, for people listening, it's a golf ball or maybe for people listening, it's a baseball bat. Right. And, but no matter what, everybody has their own little unique stories. Maybe it is a brick, and yours is just a little bit different than mine, right? But people just have to think bigger. They have to think about, you know, and you mentioned your why. We like to call it our reason, um, you know, and we talk about that all the time in the podcast and the formula for creating it um, is to radically educate and share one's narrative. And, and to build that foundation, you have to know your story. Say, say that again. I, I love that. I, I remember reading that. Say that again. Slow that down. Yeah, so so yeah. It's, it's, it's reason, I'll radically educate, and share one's narrative. So, so, and again, to, to create that formula and, and to be that formula, you have to know who you are. You have to know your story. That's the most important part. And so you don't have to be a creative person. <laughs> you don't have to be someone that can sit around at trivia and know every answer because you're just that nerdy, right? You, you don't have to be that person. You could be the most introverted human being that I've ever met. You know your story. You know the things that will impact others in the way that you share them, in the way that you show those glimpses to the people that you're trying to sell to. Because yeah, not everybody's gonna to relate to the fact that I have a great relationship with my father, but they can relate to the story because maybe they didn't have a good relationship with their dad at all. But the way that I present it draws them out and makes them say, that's interesting, I'd like to hear more about that because I, I didn't like my dad. And it's happened to me multiple times. And when I say multiple, I mean hundreds of times over my career. So. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, you know, when you tell your story that people are going to just lash to it and say, oh my God, like we're the same person. <laughs> like, let me buy from you. Like, so that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to help people to understand that you're just a human being. <laughs> you're not a scummy, sleazy sales guy like they think you are. <laughs> Please look past that. <laughs> Please look past my industry and how it has tarnished the reputation of the salesperson and understand that I'm here because I want to be, because I love to do this, because I have fun and because I want to serve you. And, and if we're leading with that attitude and we're creating this difference internally in ourselves, our prospects will slowly catch on. It might not happen within the first you know, 10 appointments even, but on that 11th one, when you find that person that it clicks with, they're your customer for the next 30 years. My dad is a testament to that too. Mm. Mm. I mean, I, I love that. I just, I love the idea of just releasing one story. And I, and I know that you're, um, you're a believer in that. Um, I recently, one of the guys I had on who's a world champion speaker um, talks about releasing the power of your story that you're, what you find average, actually other people find amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, I guess like in terms of, I'm, I'm real curious. Um, I've had um, Stu Heineck on here. I know that you, our friends okay. with uh, Mr. Mr. Contact Marketing. Um, <laughs> to, like in terms of um, like, like if you, if you, like, can you break down a little bit of the process of that? Like, so you have a, you have a client list of like top 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, or do you just roll around with your, with your box of bricks and you walk in and then, um, and then after that, do you like, like after you've done the brick and that didn't get a response, like what, what comes next? How do you? Yeah. Yeah. I feel so Stu Heineck is like, you know, I talk about my dad and the influence that he had on me and, and really he is the catalyst behind who the copier warrior is. And then one of my mentors, Rich Johnson, but from afar, Stu Heineck molded me, <laughs> you know? So I, I look at Stu Heineck as like the grandfather of the copier warrior and I, not because like he's old by any means. I think he's actually pretty young, but he's the West Coast warrior. <laughs> yeah, he's the West Coast warrior, but because he is for me, he is the foundation of, of content marketing. He is the foundation of what it is that a copyright warrior does in the first place. Because sure, I was doing it on a local level, even when I first read his book, How to Get a Meeting with Anyone. But it, to me, to, to, to learn that this man <laughs> had been doing what I thought was kind of cool on a local level, but on a, <laughs> on a national level with people that were you know, hundreds of, worth hundreds of millions of dollars as right. individuals. You know, Presidents, to, yeah. Right, dude, to me, I was like, okay, cool. I can do that. You know, like I don't just have to go to this mom and pop and try to get them to do business with me through, you know, this different way of selling. Like I can go to anyone because everyone is a, is a human that goes home, that Netflix and chills, that has to, <laughs> whatever it is, right. You know, that is a huge star Wars nerd. Like we, we have to tap into the things that make life fun. 
Okay. Yes. If we don't, then you know, business will just continue to be boring. It'll continue to break our hearts. It'll continue to be something that our prospects and our buyers don't want anything to do with when it comes to a relationship with us and our sales. So, so when it comes down to the content marketing pieces and you know how it is that I distribute them, uh, I'm pretty big on being intentional. And so the brick piece itself, like, yes, I can mass produce that and I can take it to a bunch of people. But for me, it's more about who do I want to do business with even more so than who is it that's going to be accepting of these content pieces? Cause I don't really care about whether or not someone's preference is to get my brick or not. I'm doing it for a different reason. <laughs> I'm doing it so that maybe they'll see the difference, even if it's just a few to get them to talk to me, but I'm also doing it to people that I want to, to have a business relationship with. Not that I just want to buy a copier from me. Oh, yeah. these guys have, these guys have 12 machines over here and they got a production unit and they got all this offline equipment and this is a quarter of a million dollar sale. Let's go and use your marketing stuff on it. No. <laughs> and why? Because I have no idea if we want to do business with those people <laughs> in the first place, we need to do some research on them. We need to understand that they're, they're the people that are the buyers, our points of contact, the front desk, and, and the founders, right? We need to know that we align with their morals and values. We need to know that this isn't just somebody that buys wholesale copiers and, and gets the cheapest price, that, that they want a relationship with the guys selling to them, and that they want to dig deeper into the copier, that they want to make it efficient inside of their workflows, and that, that, that they give a rip about anything, mm and talk to them about so and you can do that pretty easily dude you go to their mission statements you, you go and you look at what are the things that they are taking on in, in the fiscal year or that they have as you know the top five goals and or achievements that they want to, to to progress toward maybe it's environmental stuff maybe it's you know I don't know a myriad of things but at the end of the day what it, what it translates to is on it on something deeper <laughs> you know when someone says we're we're consciously trying to do this and you just read it for the surface level that it is you're, you're cutting yourself short you know and so so giving so the you take time you're not yeah. you're not just scatter shooting these things out there you're really taking time to know who um you're putting this in front of because you're realizing that uh, uh for better or for worse right relationships are either gonna be it's just gonna be a blessing to everyone or it's, it's gonna be something you would wish you could trade back yeah nightmare yeah well dude this is awesome dale this has been so much fun hanging out with you man um, this is, uh, you know, again, for, for those that, um, that want to have more of Dale Dupree, you can find him uh, as a co-host of the Selling Local podcast, which uh, how often are you guys putting stuff out there, Dale? Uh, once, a, once a week on Mondays, we come out with a new episode. There you go. Once a week on Mondays, definitely tune into that. I've listened to several episodes of what he's got going on there. It's not just him. He's got some other really uh, radical, cool people on there with him as well. Uh, other, at least the ones I've listened to other people in Orlando. It's, it's just really good stuff. Um, and also literally, I think if you, um, I don't know if this is the best place, but I mean, I think if you type in Dale Dupree or even the copier warrior on LinkedIn or just Google, um, you're going to find plenty about Dale. Like what's, what's the preferred method for someone to get in, in touch with you, Dale? Yeah, I tell people that they can go to copierwarrior.com because I've got my LinkedIn channel, my Twitter channel, my YouTube channel, everything tied back to copierwarrior.com. But you're right, if you just Google Copier Warrior or Dale Dupree, you can find any, any method. I even have my cell phone on all my websites. You know, so people, if, if people are feeling, you know, tenacious, <laughs> they can grab that, shoot me a text, give me a call, ask me some questions. Like, I'm always down to connect with anybody and everybody. So, but, but my main form of communication um, and the best way to find me and the best way to engage with me is LinkedIn and through my content. So either hit follow or if you're feeling lucky, send me a connection request and, you know, follow along on my story, my journey, and hopefully it helps you guys in, in the long run and the short run of what you're trying to accomplish in the sales world. Dude, this is awesome. I'm going to give you one more chance, right? You're, 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 at, you're at the plate. All right, you're, you're, you're last batter, bases are loaded, your team is down by three, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a fastball right down the middle. I want you to knock it out of the park. I want you to figure out, like we're, we're talking to people, some of these people, like the, what you've been sharing has been almost loosening some of the chains that bind, but I want you to give permission. There, there are certain permissions people need to be, uh, you know, to have to, to be unique, to be themselves, and I mean, I just want you to... Uh, just jump up in your pulpit, let it rip, and give us a last encouragement, and then we'll, we'll say goodbye. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate a little bit here, like, and, and not you're gonna think it's deviation, but when I get to the end, you'll love it. But I want to tell everybody listening that for me, when when I really had my true awakening in the sales world was when I lost my father a couple of years ago to cancer, mm -hmm. and that awakening for me was was one that affected me greater than anything else has ever affected me in my life. And what it did for me though is that because because people hear that and they think oh, you lost your dad or you lost your best friend, that sucks. But I got this deeper <laughs> understanding of who my father was when he left. Not that I didn't know already, but mm. when, I, when I got up at the funeral to speak um, for the eulogy and to honor my family, I looked out in the crowd for the first time that day and I, I saw a sea of people. <laughs> I mean, it was thousands of people still coming through the door people standing, people sitting. I mean, it was overwhelming. And then afterwards, people came up to me and they said, you know, things like, Dale, it's good to see you. Or they would say things like, hey, my name is so-and-so. We've never met. And your dad was just my copier guy. <laughs> but, you know, for me, he was more than that. You know, people will see him as somebody that just sold me a copier. But you know, your dad spoke into my life. Your dad cared about me, and it was more than just a business relationship. Mm. And so, in that moment, I, I had I had that full awakening, dude. That my my father never separated who he was from his work, uh, because his work was to care for the community that he was involved in. Um, you might see them as customers or clients, but my dad saw them as family. So, you know, one of the things that I say to to honor my father is that you know, at your sunset be remembered as the greatest to have ever walked this earth, even if it's just mm -hmm. as an acquaintance to others, you know, but one that had a bigger impact than the longest relationship that any individual has ever had in the first place, you know, because at the end, dude, your, your legend begins. And so right now in this moment as a salesperson, you're at a crossroads. <laughs> you're trying to figure out how do I hit my quota in September? Because uh, I barely squeaked by in August, you know, how am I going to stay in, in the position that I am? How am I going to support my family? I, I, I don't feel like I can do this anymore. But everybody that hears that and that's resonating with them, or even those that are just kind of like on the fence about sales, understand that sales is much <laughs> bigger than the way that you perceive it. And, and so for the lionhearted, sales is just your beginning. So, so go out there and prove to others that, that you are different and, and that it's not just different like um, – you know, one rapper to the other rapper or one individual to a different individual or, you know, the CEO of Costco and the CEO of Walmart. I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about it on that surface level, but I'm talking about it being something so deep that it affects those around you just by the smile that you bring to their face. Mm. Dale, I love it, man. Thanks for bringing the heat. And um, I, I, I know that you've, you've impacted people here, stirred people up here. And guys, I just want to speak in unison with Dale. You know, my three, my three favorite letters, you be you. Go figure out a way to be yourself. Wield your sword to fight against whatever it is you're fighting against, but be the warrior that's not fighting because you hate what's in front of you, but because you love what's behind you. Go mm -hmm. connect, be genuine, and don't ever let your talent be limited by your zip code. Go sell anywhere, guys. <laughs>